achieve today. Amen. Good to see you again on this platform. I believe that the Lord has done you well. Amen. Let's just bless the name of the Lord this evening and thank God for the opportunity for life. For the opportunity of life, for the opportunity to breathe the air that we're breathing. For the opportunity to l see our loved ones, to live life to the fullest. Some of you were able to step out to your workplace and come back safely home. Some of you were able to work from home as many that are working from home or doing one thing or the other. God gave you strength this morning. You woke up this morning. He set you on your feet. He gave you the grace and the will to live again. So we just want to thank God. We just want to thank God for especially this week. Today is Wednesday and he has seen us through. He has kept us. He has protected us. He has guided us, filled us with his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. What more can we ask of the Lord? He has loaded us with benefits, abundant benefits, unspeakable benefit, the benefit that you cannot you cannot count, you cannot account for, you cannot number. There's so many things that God has blessed us with. If we were supposed to be asking God for each and every one of those things that he has endowed us with or blessed us with, you will lose count. You, will, you won't even remember no matter how long your list is. Amen. But God has given them freely unto us. He has blessed us with everything that relates to life and godliness. So we just want to bless our Father in heaven. We just want to bless the King of kings, the maker of all things, the ancient of days, the monarch of the universe, the creator of, of heaven and earth, the one who made you and I, the one who created us in his own image and likeness. Hallelujah. We just want to thank him. We just want to thank him in everything that he has done for us in righteousness. Look at watching out for us and for our loved ones, keeping us, preserving us, shielding us from the plans and the attack of the enemy. If it has not been the, the, word, the Lord who has been on our side, you and I would not be here today. Or it would have been a different story. Hallelujah. With so many things that are happening in and around the world today. For us to be here, it can only be God. It's just by his mercies. The Bible clearly states that it is by the mercies of the Lord that we are not consumed. Amen. We are not consumed because of the mercy of the Lord. If the mercies of the Lord has not been extravagant in our lives, in the things that we do, you and I will not be standing here today. That's why we have come this evening to just give him thanks, to give him praise, to give him honor. And you will, you will appreciate that with me. You will say, yes, indeed, the Lord has been good. The Lord has been faithful. The Lord has been gracious. The Lord has been awesome. Whatever expression you want to use, let's just bless the name of our God. We have come into this space to worship him. We have come into this place to seek his face. We have come into this place to do his will. We have come into this place to honor our God, to reverence him, to worship him so that his children can join in to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. So that the children of God can worship God in this holy tabernacle so that the children of God can bless the name of the Lord in everywhere possible hallelujah some of you might still be on your way right now I want to encourage you that God is faithful you might say to yourself how, how long is it going to take me to get to where I am maybe you're stuck in the traffic I want to assure you that the same God who took you out this morning this afternoon this evening is also able to bring you back into his presence is able to take you home safely to your loved ones in the name of Jesus Jesus. That is what God can do. He is a marvelous God. He is a God that keeps to his word. If he has said a thing, he watches his word to bring to pass. There is nothing impossible with him. There is nothing difficult with him. Even the things that are difficult with men are possible, possible with God. Hallelujah. So this evening, we just want to reference him. The one, the, 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 the giver of life. 
the lifter of our heads. Hallelujah. The changer of destiny. The one who is able to turn things in your life around. The one who is able to change that situation that you think is too difficult. It's too complicated that you don't even know how to go about it. God will grant you wisdom. God will grant you knowledge. God will grant you understanding to navigate your way. To navigate in that difficult path. He said, I will go before you to make every crooked way straight and every rough way smooth. He said, is there anything impossible with with you it is possible with me because he is the god of all flesh there is nothing impossible with him his words say that he knows the plans and the thoughts that he thinks towards you god knows his plan towards you it might not in it, it might not be clear for you but god knows his plan all we need to do is to align ourselves in god's will and one step after step after step he will take us to that destination where he has prepared for us in the name of jesus and I want to ensure you that nothing will halt you. Nothing will distract you. You will not lose your focus. Nothing will stop you. You will get to that final stop. You will get to that place where God has created for you. That place, that place that he has planned to set to you. No matter what is in your way, no matter the obstacles, no matter the distraction, no matter the barrier, you will leap over those barriers in the name of Jesus. They will not stop you because the Bible made us to understand that we are victorious in him. We are more than conqueror. The Bible says that we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. There is nothing impossible with him once you trust in him hallelujah he is able he is able he's an able god the things that you look at and say lord how am i going to achieve this in my lifetime how am i going to achieve this in this journey it doesn't look like it right now i'm out of job how am i going to accomplish this i want to encourage you tonight that god is your source god is your supplier he will supply all your all your needs according to the riches of glory um uh, according to the riches of um uh, uh, in christ jesus there is nothing that god cannot do whatever you lack today everything is in god's hand god has prepared a wealthy place for you say i will take you to that wealthy place you will not lack any good thing because god has prepared that place for you so that when you said i will set to you i will take you to that place where i will set to you he also said that i will lead you to the green pastures you might not know where the green pastures are but God will lead you to that place. The place where you will not lack. The place where milk and honey shall be flowing. The place where water will flow constantly. You, even in the desert land, he said, I will cause water to flow just for your, for your sake. Hallelujah. That is what God can do. The promises of God are sure. Hallelujah. So stand upon the word of God because when you stand upon God's word, nothing is impossible. Nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration because we have tapped oh lord into your will tonight lord you know you know just like you ask Ezekiah, lord father we don't know but you alone know tonight we believe you that dry bones shall live again we believe you that dead situation shall come alive again in the name of jesus even the every situation concerning us concerning our body, Lord, it will come alive today in the name of Jesus. We trust you for supernatural healing in our physical body, in our spiritual mind, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe you and trust you for restoration, oh God. Restoration in any way, in any form, Lord, that we need restoration, that your children need restoration. You will grant us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we commit the entire service tonight as we are coming into the prayer section, as we are praying and fasting in this month of October. My God, my God, we know that every plan and purpose of the enemy shall be destroyed in our lives in the name of Jesus. We have been commanded to shut the mouth of the enemy. Lord, we have... To, we have we have yoked ourselves with the servant of God, with your servant, that you have given this vision in this month of October. Lord, my God, by the end of this October, we have every reason to glorify your name, to celebrate, because we know that we will come out strong, better in the name of Jesus. We will come out strong and better in the name of Jesus. We already know that we are unstoppable. Father, we thank you. We thank you. We give you praise. We give you honor. 
We give you adoration in the name of Jesus. We commit your servant tonight to God as you'll be sharing your word, even the officers that will be praying, that will be taking different prayer sessions. We pray that you fill their lips, Lord. Fill their hearts with your understanding. Make their lips like the pen of the ready writer that when they stand to declare your word, Lord, it shall be thus said the Lord in the name of Jesus. Nothing shall be added, nothing shall be taken out. Lord, your word shall be yea and amen. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, Lord, tonight's conference, so Lord, shall be exceptional. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. I cannot call on your name. And call on men no way, no way. I cannot stand before you and kneel before men no way. No way, you are my God, oh Lord, you are my God, oh Lord, yeah. I cannot call on your name and call on a man no way no way I cannot kneel before you and kneel before men no way, no way, you are my God, yes you are, you are my God, yes you are, you are my God. My God, my God, you are my God, oh Lord, you are, you are my God, show yourself strong, you are my God, yes, you are my God. Not call on your name and call on a man no way no way I cannot stand before you and kneel before men no way You are my God, you are my God, oh, I will worship you, you are my God, I will reference you, I will bless your name, you are my God, my God, my God. who you are you are my God yes you are 
fears you are. Reverence him tonight. Let him know that he is your God. Let him know that no one else matters in your life. That him alone, him alone sits upon the throne. Him alone rules in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, we bless your holy name. We give you praise. We give you honor in Jesus much less name we worship hallelujah once again I want to welcome you into the presence of God I want to welcome you into this platform and just a quick reminder if you haven't you know create a watch party or invite someone to join the service with you you can do that right now you can create a watch party you can invite your friends your loved ones to join you tonight is going to be prayers amen and i believe that whatever petition you bring before god they will all be answered amen hallelujah Woo! hallelujah we come to you tonight to bless your name, oh God. Hey, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hey, is the sound of victory, hallelujah, hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah, oh, let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. Hallelujah, eh, say hallelujah, eh, hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, eh. He's a sound of victory. Sing with me. Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Sing hallelujah. Oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. Sing hallelujah. Hey, hey. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hey. He's a sound of breakthrough, yeah, hey, hey. Hallelujah, hey, hey. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh. Let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. He has made a way. Where there was no way Hallelujah, hey He is the sound of breakthrough Hallelujah, hey Hallelujah, oh Let the sound of rejoicing fill this sound Sing hallelujah, hey, hey, hey Hallelujah, oh, let me hear you say, Hallelujah, eh? He is the sound of victory. Can you hear it? Hallelujah, eh? Hallelujah, oh, let the sound of rejoicing fill this house. He has made a way. Where there was no way Hallelujah hey. He is the sound of breakthrough Ooh. Hallelujah hey. Hallelujah oh Let the sound of rejoicing fill this house Let the sound of rejoicing Let the sound of rejoicing feel this let the sound of breakthrough let the sound of rejoicing feel this one more time let the sound let the sound of rejoicing feel this
this. Come on. Put those lovely hands together and rejoice in the presence of the Lord. You will always bring something into the presence of God. Yes. The Bible encourages us to come with something in the presence of God. Hallelujah. One thing we ask of you. One thing that we desire that as we worship you tonight lord come and change your lives one thing we ask of you lord one thing that we desire that as we worship you as a family lord come and change our lives sing one thing one thing we ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you tonight lord come and change our lives sing arise 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 take your place be enthroned on our praise arise king of kings holy god as we sing arise one thing we ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you lord come and change our lives one thing we ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you jesus lord come and change your lives one thing one thing we ask of you one thing that we desire that as we worship you Lord, come and change your life. Sing, arise, 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 arise. Take your place, be enthroned on our praise. Arise, King of kings, holy God, as we sing. on our praises yes we lift you up we lift you up we lift you up we lift you up praises we lift you up we lift you up we lift you up on our praises sing arise 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 Take your place, be enthroned on our praise. Arise, King of Kings, Holy God, as we sing. Arise, arise, sing, arise. Let me see you say, Arise. Oh, arise. Are you saying it? Sing, arise. I can't see arise. Sing, arise, 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 arise. I say we lift you, we lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our praises. We lift you up, we lift you up. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up, Lord. We lift you up on our praises. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift 
you up on our praises join me we lift you up we lift you up we lift you up on our praises we lift you up we lift you up we lift you up on our praises come on let's jump those lovely ears together for jesus there is nothing he cannot do he's the creator of the universe hallelujah hallelujah every praise belongs to our god amen every praise every praise to our god and every word of worship we want our code every praise every praise is to our god sing every praise every praise to our god and every word of worship we want our code every praise every praise is to our god sing every praise to our god and every word of worship one accord every praise every praise is to our god sing every praise to our god and every word of worship one accord every praise every praise every praise every praise every praise every praise when i hear you sing every praise when i hear you sing every praise when i see you clap every praise when i see you clap every praise when i see you dance every praise can i see you dance every praise when i see you jump every praise when i see you jump every praise 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 is to our god indeed all our praises goes to god amen all our praises belong to god amen lord we worship you lord we give you praise we honor you thank you jesus let us bless the name of our lord he is faithful in all his way he is magnificent lord we bless you there is nothing too difficult for you hallelujah thank you jesus Hallelujah. Because of the love of Christ, we are here. He gave all on the cross of Calvary that you and I might live again. That you and I might have a quality life. That you and I might live an everlasting life. Lord, we give you praise. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Above all powers, above all kings, above all nature and all created things above all wisdom and all the ways of man you were here before the world began above all kingdoms 
above all thrones, above all wonders the world has ever known, above all wealth and treasures of the earth. There's no way to measure what you want Oh, oh crucify Laid behind the stone You will live to die Rejected and alone Like the rose Trampled on the ground took the fall and taught of me above all you are crucified you laid behind the stone you will live to die reject Yes, Lord, 
You took my fall and taught of me. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High, the God of our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, the God of hope, the God of light, the God of life, the God of all faithfulness. Blessed be the name of the Lord Most High, the one who lives forever and ever. We magnify the name of the Lord. We bless him for his good, for his blessings, for his mercies endure forever. We worship our King. We worship our God. We worship the one who lives forever and ever. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. We magnify you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor and we give you all adoration. Be thou glorified, be thou magnified. Be lifted up I, O God, above the heavens and above the earth. Let your glory fill the earth. Let your majesty be made known in all that we do today. We bless your holy name. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. And all the saints say a big amen. Let the saints say a big amen. Shout hallelujah. Shout a better hallelujah. Amen and glory be to God. I welcome every one of us into this awesome presence of God. It is the seventh day of our prayer and fast program and I know that God is doing something significant in all of our lives my prayer for you is this that that which the Lord God has started in your life he will perfect it in the name of Jesus he will not only perfect it but you will testify of it and you will be the beneficiary, the witness of it in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Because we are praying for a month and we are working around a theme, it is very clear that God will be coming from various angles to minister to us, to inspire us, to bring his uh, thinking into our uh, sphere to make sure that what he has in his heart is clear to us and visible to us known to us and so i want to encourage you that in all aspects of this uh, period the programs that have been put and the events that have been um, that have been slated and scheduled in this period make sure that you avail yourself of them as much as you can make the opportunity make the room to avail yourself of them there are daily prayers that go on um, at our headquarters church 
on a daily basis some of us are working already with the schedule i have made sure to share it with you so there is prayers at 9 a.m in the morning there is prayers at 12 noon and there is prayers at 5 p.m that is why we are not having all those daily prayers that we normally would have been having because i expect you to be linking up and praying in that direction uh, along with the entire body of trim however because we also have a local presence and a local need we have local aspirations our weekly services um, will be geared in that direction as well so we will be praying every wednesday thursday and friday and i want to challenge you to be part of that prayer uh, 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 moment praise the lord so make sure you are part of that prayer moment on friday on thursday and every wednesday every week until the end of the fast until the end of october so every wednesday to friday we'll be meeting like this from 7 to 9 p.m and we'll be praying so we'll, we'll, we'll schedule prayers between 7 to 8 30 um maximum 9 which i doubt but definitely 7 to 8 30 definitely we'll pray every wednesday to friday praise jesus so make sure you plan for that tonight i will take my scriptures from the book of luke 11 and we'll look at verse 19 to 22. jesus christ said that and if i by belzebub cast out devils by whom do your sons cast them out therefore shall they be your judges but if i with the finger of god cast out devils no doubt the kingdom of god is come upon you when a strong man harmed keepeth his palace his goods are in peace but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him it taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoils father in the name of jesus we ask that you guide our spirit guide our heart even as we come to the place of power and grace even as we come to your presence lord inspire our spirit holy spirit we do not know how to pray as we ought but you are able to make intercessions for us O oh god with groans and mutterings and offerings that our mind our our intellect our life experience cannot uh, attain unto so we ask holy spirit that you will superimpose upon our spirit superimpose upon our minds superimpose upon our understanding tonight let your counsel alone be revealed and made known we give all the glory and all the honor and all the majesty to you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Let all the saints say a big amen. Shout hallelujah. Glory be to God. All right. What is it that we have before us tonight? Jesus Christ was making something very clear to us. He was sharing with us very deep principles very very deep principles number one is that he was accused so there was an accusation that was leveled against him many of you have suffered accusation the work of the devil in your life is the work of an accuser satan is an accuser there are many things that are accusing you in life. Circumstances of life accuse you. Accuse you before God. Accuse you before men. Do you understand me? Sometimes, let me take the moment to push that into some areas and some domains that you might not have thought about. Sometimes your skin color accuses you. That is why somebody sees you and because you are black, they think that you are like this. Somebody sees you and they see that you are white and because you are white, they think this is the way you, be, you behave. Your skin color accuses you. Where you are born. So if you are born privileged, 
the privileges of your birth accuse you. Listen, I have grown up and I have had experiences of having days when I didn't have enough to eat. I have grown up. Many of you have not had that experience. I have had to cut my mother's undergarment to sew myself an underpant. If I don't tell you, you will not know. But my children will never have that experience and they cannot apologize for it. And so those who look at my children today and say they are spoiled because they are not having the kind of experiences I have experienced, they are accusing them. So there is an accusation that is against them. Because every estate that you have or that you are in life is a potential accusation. So racism is an accusation of your skin color. And we practice it. Black on black, white on white, Christian on Christian. So he was responding to an accusation. So that is one of the core things that our prayers shall revolve around tonight. So he responded to them that if I, by Beelzebub, do cast out devils, I return the favor to you. By whom do your children cast them out? He says, therefore, shall your children be your judges. He says, but, and if I, wow, I love that. But, contrary to your accusation, contrary to your expectation, contrary to your pro, uh, projection, contrary to your desire to see me fail, to see me stumble, to see me not make it, to see me not do well, contrary to all of that, contrary to your fear for my competence, contrary to your fear for my ability, for my capabilities, contrary to that. But and if I do this by the finger of God, the finger of God will find an expression in your life. The finger of God shall find an expression in your situation. Because when God began to do the things that only God can do, when he showed his power in the presence and in the life of the Egyptians, every one of them from their sorcerers to their prognosticators to their diviners and to their pharaoh, they all declared that this is the finger of God. I am praying that the finger of God will manifest itself in your life. When he challenged the, the Goliath and, and, and the giants of God, they, they, and he smote them with emerald. They said, this is the finger of God. I am saying that the finger of God will find an expression in your life and in your situation. In the mighty name of Jesus. He says, but if I but and if two conditional statements. Wow. There is a double jeopardy that God will put into motion. That no accusation no thing that is brought against you on earth and in heaven will prevail in the name of Jesus. There, 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 there's a motion of jo double jeopardy that God will bring into, 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 into place. Because you see, you cannot suffer twice for the same sin. Jesus Christ died for your sins. Jesus paid the price for the things that you are supposed to suffer for. So you cannot suffer for it. And that's why it says, but and if. But and if. I, with the finger of God, cast out devils. Then there is no question that the kingdom of God is come upon you. Hear me, children of God. I am not one to foment uh, fear and all of those things. And I'm not a man that is easily swayed by the kind of... Uh, you know, the, 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 the doctrines that sway people left and right. I have never been afraid or unclear about the issue of salvation for me and the end times. My simple philosophy has always been that every time I see more indicators of the end times, I have only one responsibility to myself and that is responsibility is to make sure that my salvation is secure. I don't need anything else. 
I'm not afraid because I know that this end, this world will come to an end. No matter how bad sin becomes, no matter what level of evil we see on this earth, in this world, I am not afraid. I am not shaking. I don't even care. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't affect me. I'm telling you the truth. I will sleep easy because I know that it must happen because that is the word of God. The word of God says so. Listen, if suddenly they are cutting people's head and using it to make uh, what? Necklaces. Hear me, child of God. The Bible says that evil will abound and the love of many will wax cold. It says the powers of heaven and earth shall be shaken and fear will greet men because of the things that will begin to be revealed and manifest on, on the earth. So hear me, children of God. You must be clear about the word of God. You must be clear about the things that God is doing. Glory be to God. There is nothing that is going to happen on earth that is new, that should surprise you, that should shock you, that should shock your sensibilities because God has already said so in his words. Now, what is the significant thing? The significant thing is that when you now read the scriptures and you begin to see those indicators, let it inspire you to salvation. Let it inspire you to be insistent and instant upon the gospel of peace, upon this commission that Jesus Christ has committed to us as ambassadors of salvation. So, when I stepped back and I looked at all the things that have been happening in the recent times, I can say to you, children of God, we have crossed into another dispensation. We have crossed into another dispensation. This is not the time and place for me to be establishing that for you. But you see, the days that we are in are like the days when Augustus Caesar made that declaration for every man to go back to their native place of origin because a child has to be born in Bethlehem. It was a dispensational shift. Something that was so significant that it must affect the entire world. Everybody must know that for this reason, something significant happened. That is what has happened to us in this period. COVID is an announcement that there is a dispensational shift. So, under these auspices, Jesus Christ, the kingdom of God, has visited upon us and so it says, when I do this thing by the finger of God, let it be clear to you that it is because the kingdom of God has come upon you. The kingdom of God has come. And that is exactly what has happened to us in this time. The kingdom of God. In Isaiah 9, 6 to 7, it says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. But upon the throne of David and upon his own shoulder, upon his kingdom, to order it. And to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forevermore. Because the zeal of the Lord shall perform this. Since the government of the increase of his government... And of peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom. To do what? The government is upon his shoulder. To order. The throne of David. To order. And to establish it with judgment. When the kingdom of God. Comes upon men. It does the work of reorganization. When the kingdom of God comes upon a situation, it does the work of reorganization. When the kingdom of God connects with a situation, it does the work of reorganization. I am declaring and praying and prophesying over you tonight that the kingdom of God is come upon you and it will do the work of reorganization. It will reorganize your life. It will reorganize your finances. It will reorganize your aspiration. It will reorganize everything concerning you in the name of Jesus. The work of the kingdom power is to reorganize. It brings divine order. That is why 
if the president of the United States is going to anywhere in the world, nobody provides a car for him. Nobody provides an aeroplane. For, do you understand me? He goes in with everything. He reorganizes their, uh, their, their security details. It reorganizes everything. He takes charge. He goes in there and takes charge. For the period that he's in that region, he is the, he is the power in that region. He goes in. That's the way the kingdom of God visits upon you. When he goes in, God comes. Everything about his kingdom, his governance, his power, his protocol, his approach, his security, his benevolence, his might, everything enters into the territory. Into every territory where you have cried and you have lamented and you have lifted up your hands in sorrow, I declare that the government and the kingdom of God will enter that territory tonight in the name of Jesus. The kingdom of God will enter that territory in in the name of Jesus, into your sorrow, into your pain, into your shame, into your into your cares, into your fears, the kingdom of God will enter that territory in your life. In the name of Jesus, He goes in and He does the work of reorganization. So Jesus now said, to bear relevance to what I've just said to you, He says, "But when a stronger man, when a stronger than he, I've come back to Luke 11 now." From verse 22 he says but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him he taketh from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divided his spoils wow he says when a stronger one than he shall come he will overcome him that's the one thing i like about the power of god it is, it is an overcoming power. It's an overcoming presence. It is an undisputing, indisputable power. You know, God is sovereign. His power is sovereign. His kingdom is sovereign. So when God comes into any situation, His power, His sovereignty, His supremacy prevails. So anything that has been in existence previously, the supremacy of God comes in and prevails over it. He says it takes from him all his armor and everything that he trusts upon. May God disempower everything that has limited you in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that has limited you emotionally, spiritually, everything that has limited you aspirationally, let the power of God step into that territory of your life, overcome, overpower, and take control in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's jump again to Isaiah chapter 9. There's the last phrase that I love there. I want to connect it with what I've said to you so far. In Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7, it says, Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth and even forever. He now says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Wow! I love that phrase. <laughs> I love that phrase. There is an energy. There is, there is an inertia. There is, there is a present continuous a present persistent energy in the power of God by its nature because it is the source of energy by its nature it is pulsing with power it is pulsing with energy and so that's why the Bible says that he has set the Sun in his course running its race he says no one can hide from his heat. He says he's like a strong man that sets out to run his, a race his beginning is from the start of the end of, of the end of the world are you following me he sets the sun in his course the sun is an energy an energy generating body when you see the sun you see light you see heat it does not need to charge from anywhere it does not need to recharge from anything that is like the power of god it is self-sustaining self-subsisting self it is pulsing with energy it is it is so much full of energy that it, it cannot contain itself that is what is called zeal. 
Jeremiah said that when the word of God, the energy of God comes into you, when the power of God comes into you, it is, it is like fire in my bones. I cannot shut it in because you cannot keep it in. The power of God cannot be hidden, cannot be kept back, cannot be limited, cannot be inhibited. Are you following me? And it is what it has got zeal. There's a zest. There's a zest. There's a bubbling. There's a life generating essence in the power of God. So when the kingdom of God, when the power of God comes upon you, comes upon a situation, there's a zeal inherent in that power of God to do and to accomplish. That is the life of the power of God. It's a power that does. It's a power that accomplishes. It's a power that it, it just acts naturally. It acts. It acts. So, so when a stronger than he shall come, when the power of God comes into your situation, he says it will overcome him. Isaiah in Isaiah 26 verse 13 says, O Lord, our God, other lords besides thee have had dominion over us. There are other lords and powers that have such dominion over our lives. The economy of our nation. The culture. Financial culture. Spiritual culture. When you get into a church, you cannot thrive because of the culture. When you get into an office, you cannot progress because of the culture. These are masters, lords that limit us. And it's all of those things that the power of God shall visit tonight in your life in the name of Jesus. So when the zeal of God is being made manifest in your situation, what will it do? Four quick things. Number one, the zeal of God will act upon the power of the enemy. When I'm talking about the power of the enemy, I'm talking about the, the authority, the foundation, the right, the opportunity for the enemy, for the adversary, for the accuser to prevail or act upon your life. The opportunity for any force, for any dominant uh, uh, intention to influence and direct your life. So when God and his power, when the zeal of God steps into your territory, the first thing it acts upon is the power of the enemy. The instrument of right. The right of access. And so that is why anybody who does not know Jesus Christ, if you want your life to change, the first thing you must do is to give your life to God. Because that is what now gives the Holy Spirit the right of access to your life. It gives the right of access to the benefits. It gives the right of access. That becomes the authority, the foundation of everything. So when God comes into your life, it begins to act upon every other authority that have subsisted in your life. That is why I don't belong to the group of people that says that you, are, you, are, you, are, you have a trouble of generational curses. I don't believe that. If for any reason, you want to trace your generation, trace it to Abraham, trace, trace it to God, trace it to Adam. Hallelujah. When the power of God comes into you, the first thing it does, it rests. It overcomes. It says it must overcome him. It must overcome the power of the enemy. Bible makes us to understand in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56. The Bible says that the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is in the law praise god romans 4 50 makes us to understand that because the law walketh wrath for where there is no law there is no transgression so where there is no authority there can be no impact where there's no access of right there can be no access there can be no the influence So, for the accuser, for the enemy of our generation, the enemy of our children, the enemy of our future,
to begin to act. It must have some powers. So if you look around you, addiction. Addiction becomes the power of the enemy, the access to your life. You can be addicted to TV. You can be addicted to food. You can be addicted to drugs. You can be addicted to all kinds of, to all kinds of stuff. It becomes the access. Pornography, all of these things. It becomes the access. So ad addiction is one of the powers of the enemy. Pleasure. Rebellion. Evil concupiscences. Pleasure. Wickedness. When you meet a wicked person, because of the wickedness of his heart, it gives right of access to the power of evil to walk through him. Without the wickedness in the heart of men, the devil does not have access. There will be less evil. Evil breeds because of the wickedness in the hearts of men. Because of greed. So that's the first thing that the kingdom of God must deal with. And we must deal with that tonight. The power of the enemy. The second thing that the power of God will deal with are the systems of the enemy. What do I mean by that? The systems are the product. The systems are the product and the strategies for capturing and incarcerating so we are talking about the deception models, the products that the enemy uses. Long ago, there used to be people who suggested to me, and I used to believe, let me say rather, you know, because it was suggested that the long artificial airs that the women use and all of these things, in fact, in those days, they've not started using real human hair. You know, they, they use real human hair now. Okay? In those days, they will say that some of those artificial air and all of stuff that these women use, that um, it is demons that produce them in the bottom of the river or things or in the sea, mummy water and all of this kind of stuff. And I wonder, praise Jesus, there's no evidence for that. The devil is too smart for that. If it is air that the devil will use to demonize you, he's, he's, not, he's, not, he's not being wise. In that water, there are fishes. You eat shrimps. You eat prawn. You eat fish. <laughs> are you following me? So why, why, why bother to begin to manufacture something, uh, manufacture air and nail polish and all of that in the bottom of the sea? No. It will just put all the demons in the fish you eat. And it will serve, you will eat the fish. You will eat it. You will eat the prawn. So is that not less expensive and easy? Let's leave it for today. So when we are talking about the products of the enemy, we are talking about the things that he uses to capture to deceive the love of money. Misguided honor. We are losing a lot of our young men through misguided conception of honor. Do you see that since the, 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 the um, easing of the lockdown? Did you see that knife crime has begun to increase? When everybody was locked down, there was no, no, there was no knife crime. But now that the easing has, gone, has come, we are now having challenges, knife crime, because of this misguided product of the enemy, misguided understanding about honor, pride, racism, terrorism. These are the systems that the enemy is using. These are the systems that he is deploying into societies, into neighborhoods, into nations. He deploys these things to overcome, to destabilize, to wreck the fabric. It does happen in families. Abuse. All of these things. Those are systems that the enemy employs 
we will come against them because the power of God acts upon them when it comes. Number three, the structures of the enemy. What do I mean by that? The network, the financial network, the security, the assurance, the, the, the enabling environment. Those enabling environment, the power of God will destabilize them. And the fourth thing is the outcome for the enemy. The pleasure, the success, the riches, the good life. All of those things, the Lord and his power will rest upon them. There are nations that have been brought to their knees because of men who are seeking the outcome of evil, robbing their nations, blue and black, taking the, the resources of an entire nation and going to hide them, putting them in personal pockets. The power of God will destabilize and challenge all of this framework, all of these elements that has been challenging and inhibiting our lives in the name of Jesus. When the kingdom of God and the power of God visits your situation, his government, his policies, his ideas, that is why he says, I know my thoughts towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you peace, hope, a future. To bring you to an expected end. That is the philosophy, the policy, the, pro the procedures, the ways of God. When God and his power visits you, all of those things come to play for you. So that nothing is able to separate you from the love of Christ. Hallelujah. Glory be to Jesus. The power of the kingdom will impact everything that concerns you so that you will not be able to remember the old things again. It will turn everything new. It says, forget the former things. Isaiah 43 and verse 18 to 19. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. It says, behold, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I declare by the mandate of heaven that God will do a new thing in your life. He will create a way in the wilderness. He will make rivers to flow for you in the wilderness. He will make rivers to flow for you in the dry land. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will do something new in your life that will wipe away the experience and the tears of yesterday. He will wipe away the pain. He will take away the sorrow. He will wipe away your tears in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. We have some children today who do not have an experience of the dial phone. You know, the old phone that we used to use. There are some children who have never seen that. Who have no experience, who have no knowledge of that. Because God, by what he has done in this new generation, our children grew up to know iPad. They grew up to know a mobile phone. They never knew that once upon a time, we used to carry this phone that was as big, you know, that you hold with two hands in order to talk. And then came the days of the cellular phone. Now we are having miniature computers. Palm wares. If you look back. There has been all kinds of technology that our children have never seen. Have never known. Because what is current now has wiped away all of that past. Nobody is talking about some devices anymore. Remember the days we used to talk about palm top and all of these things. Nobody's talking about that anymore. Recently, I was having some challenges with my uh, reception in my house. And I called my providers. And they said they would send me a new SIM. Children of God, I never knew that we now have an electronic SIM. So I'm carrying a phone that does not have an actual SIM card inside of it. Now they have electronic SIM. So they don't even need to send me a SIM card. I don't have the piece, the, the physical card in my phone. No, but my phone is working. It's they just sent me a code. They sent me a code. 
So very soon, the children that will be born into the generation that are only using SIM, e-SIM, they will never know that once upon a time we used to use a physical SIM. God says, I will do a new thing such that you will not remember the old things anymore. I declare that new things will wipe away your tears in the name of Jesus. New things will wipe away your experience of pain and shame in the name of Jesus. New things will wipe away your experience of disappointment and, 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 and loneliness. He will wipe it away in the name of Jesus. He will wipe away your tears. He will wipe away your pain. He will wipe away your fears in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the power of God will visit everything that has worked against you. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 25, let me begin to round it up as we begin to pray. In Daniel chapter 9, verse 25, the Bible says, Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, unto the Messiah, the prince shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again. And the wall, even in troublous times. Praise Jesus. Hear me, child of God. When God's kingdom and his power comes upon you, it will act upon every contradiction, every contraindication in your life. The power of God will act upon it. Remember that we said that every power of the enemy is the thing that God will act upon. So every contradiction. So when he was giving the prophecy and assurance to, the, to Daniel, he said to him, say, listen, the temple shall be built. Jerusalem shall be built. He even in the midst of contradiction, in troubled times, without money, without security, in the jeopardy of life, without any assurance of the future, that city shall be built. The walls shall be lifted up. I declare to you, you may be looking for assurance, but I declare the word of God to you. You may be looking for hope, but I declare the word of God to you. Hear me tonight, even in the midst of trouble, because he said he has set a table before you in the presence of your enemies. He has anointed your head with oil and your cup will run over. I declare to you today, by the mandate of heaven, in the, in the, even in the midst of trouble, you will thrive. Even in the midst of trouble, you will survive. Even in the midst of trouble, you will arise. Even in the midst of trouble you will be promoted even in the midst of trouble you will flourish you will be fruitful you will expand you will increase you will make glory known and the power of god shall be displayed in you it says even in the midst of trouble so the power of god when it acts on your behalf it will prevail in the midst of trouble your trouble the change in circumstances COVID-19, people losing their jobs, all of these things happening is not going to change what God is doing and what God has done in your life. The power of God is going to act on your behalf in the midst of this contradiction. While people are losing their job, you will get a new job. While people are losing their job, you will get a better job. While people are losing their hope, you will get a sure hope. While people are losing their life, your life will be secured in the name of Jesus. Now, it is not because we are better. It is not because we are privileged. It is because we are people of a covenant and an assignment. In the name of Jesus. Let's begin to pray tonight. So when the power of God comes, it turns things around. You are going to pray tonight. Lord, let your kingdom come upon me. Lord, let your kingdom come upon my life. Let your kingdom come upon my situation. Begin to pray now in the name of Jesus. Let your kingdom come upon my life. Let your kingdom come upon my situation. Let your kingdom come upon my circumstances. Some of you have been crying because of your children. Some of you have been crying because of your situation. Some of you have been crying because of your finances. Begin to pray tonight. Say, Lord, let your kingdom come upon my life. Let your kingdom come upon my situation. Let your kingdom invade my territory. Lord, I have a territory of pain. I have a territory of illness. I have a territory of sickness. I have a territory of 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 of, of of, of limitation in my life. Lord, let your power visit my territory. Let your power visit my territory. The territory of limitation. The, levi the territory of pain. The territory of, 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 of limitation. The territory of pain. The territory of grief. The territory of of, 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 of 
inhibition my god every territory that has been that has been a pain and a challenge to my life let your authority let your power let your kingdom come upon me let your kingdom come upon me begin to pray now let your kingdom come upon my marriage let your kingdom come upon my business let your kingdom come upon my career let your kingdom come upon my let your kingdom come upon my education begin to pray now in the name of jesus let your kingdom come oh god let your kingdom come oh god we pray for your kingdom to come upon our life we pray for your kingdom to come upon our life we pray for your kingdom to come upon our life in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for your kingdom upon everything that has caused us pain, upon everything that has caused us shame, upon everything that has caused us distress. We pray your kingdom to come. Overpower my pain, overpower my shame, overpower my life, overpower my shame, overpower my sickness, overpower my limitation, oh God, overpower my disadvantage. Overcome every closed door, overcome every circumstance that has brought me low that has brought my spirit low overcome them oh god by your power and your grace in the name of jesus hallelujah let us pray you will say i shall take root downward and i shall bear shoot upward say that i shall take root downward and i shall bear fruit upward no matter the situation that i have found myself I declare that I shall bear root downwards and bear fruit upward. Begin to pray in the name of Jesus because the power of God is coming upon me for the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So therefore I declare that I shall bear root downwards and I shall bear fruit upward because the spirit of the Lord God Jehovah he is upon me. He has anointed me with the oil of gladness above my fellows. Therefore, I shall bear root downwards and I shall bear fruit upwards in the mighty name of Jesus. In my education, I will bear root downwards. In my education, I will bear root downwards. I will bear fruit upwards. In my business, in my career, I will bear root downwards and I will bear fruit upwards in the mighty name of Jesus. I will bear root downwards. I will bear fruit upwards in the mighty name of Jesus. My marriage will bear root downwards. It will not be destabilized. My marriage will flourish with fruit upwards. Fruit of the spirit. Fruit of life. Fruit of salvation. Fruit of grace for many generations to come. In the mighty name of Jesus. My God, my God. I will bear root downward in my spirit. My spiritual life shall bear root downward. and will bear fruit upwards. I will be like a tree. A cedar in the Lebanon. My God, my bowels shall provide shade unto those that are weary. My branches shall provide comfort for the beds of the air my fruit shall provide meat oh god for the beast of the field in the mighty name of jesus i shall bear fruit downward spiritually i will bear root downwards and i will bear fruit upwards in the mighty name of jesus financially oh god i declare that i shall take root downwards and i will bear fruit upwards my god my god even in the midst of this COVID, even in the midst of this pandemic even in the midst of this economic downward my god my god even in the midst of this economic downturn i will bear root downwards oh god and i will bear fruit upwards financially emotionally intellectually in the mighty name of jesus my life shall take an upward movement in jesus mighty name praise the lord in romans chapter 16 and verse 20 the bible says that and the god of peace shall bruise satan under your feet shortly the grace of our lord jesus christ be with you amen You are going to pray. Satan is an accuser. He is the accuser of the brethren. So you are going to pray against everything that has accused your life. Everything that has accused your life. Some neighbors turn their nose against you. Because they say to themselves, why is he driving that big car? Where did he get the money from? They must be doing something. It's an accusation. People see you walking down the street, they cross over to the other side. You walk into the office, they keep quiet. When you go out, they talk about you. Pa, 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 pa. Accusation. The Bible says that is Satan. Satan is the accuser. The accuser. That's what that's the meaning of Satan. So we are going to pray against. We are going to say God bruise 
Satan, under my feet today. Every accusation against my life. Every accusation against my progress. Every accusation against my peace. Every accusation against my fulfillment. Lord, bruise the head of the accuser. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me show you one more scripture. And then we'll pray that prayer. Isaiah 27 and verse 1. He says, in that day, and that day is today, the Lord with his sore and great and strong sword shall punish Leviathan, the piercing serpent. Even Leviathan, that crooked serpent. And he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Hallelujah. Today, God will strike the head of the devil. He will strike the head of the accuser. That thing that is accusing your life. That thing that is accusing your peace. That thing that is accusing your joy. That thing that is accusing your peace of mind. You are going to pray. That health, that health that is being accused by sickness. You are going to pray to God and say, God, this illness is accusing my health. This sickness is accusing my health. Today, bruise the head of this sickness. Bruise the head of this accuser. This thing that is accusing me that i do not have the right to life that i do not have the right to life because jesus christ said i came that they might have life and they might have it abundantly everything that is stopping you from having abundant life is an accuser begin to pray lord god bruise the head of the accuser 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 everything that is accusing my financial increase everything that is accusing the growth of this ministry everything that is accusing oh god the growth and the development of our structures of our framework god tonight we come against them. Lord bruise their head. Lord bruise their head. Lord bruise their head. Lord bruise their head. Bruise the accuser. Bruise the accuser. Bruise the accuser. The accuser to my joy. The accuser to my good health. The accuser to abundant life. Lord bruise the head of the accuser. Lord bruise the head of the accuser. Bruise the head of the accuser. Lord for our generation. For our children. My God. My God. They are struggling in their generation. They are running elter skelter. Not knowing where to go from left to right. My God. Those situations and systems that have accused the life of our children. That have accused Accused this future of our children that have accused the posterity and the possibility and the potentials of our children tonight, oh God, we bruise their head, we bruise their head, we bruise their head, we bruise their head, we bruise their head in the mighty name of Jesus. We bruise the head of the accuser, we bruise the head of the accuser. We call the kingdom of God to come upon the head of the accuser. Every system, every system of the enemy, every power of the enemy, my God, my God, that is accusing our children, that is accusing their future. Every system and product of the enemy, my God, my God, every structure of the enemy, every outcome of the enemy that is accusing our children, that is bringing them down. Lord, we bring your kingdom upon them. We bring your power upon them. We bring your kingdom upon them. Let your kingdom rest upon it. Let your kingdom rest upon it. Let your power rest upon it. Let your will challenge them. Let your authority challenge them. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that is breaking our marriages, that is holding marriages down, my God, my God, we break the power of the enemy. We break the power of the accuser everything that is limiting marriages my god my god every accuser that is limiting marriages that is saying you are too old that is saying that you are not good enough that is saying you are not you are not best fit there's nobody that will come to you my god my god bruise the head of that accusing voice bruise the head of that accuser bruise the head of that accuser everything that is saying that will not prevail that will not progress that will not rise that will not be promoted my god bruise the head of the accuser bruise the head of the accuser every system every protocol my god every policy that has been put in place that it is accusing that is accusing our life that is accusing our peace that is accusing our joy my god my god the the follow system my god that has robbed us of job my god my god turn things around for us turn things around for us let your power prevail upon our circumstances we bless your holy name we give you all the praise we worship and adore you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let's look at Let's look at two more scriptures. Isaiah 63 and verse 15. The Bible says, look down from heaven and see from your lofty home. Isaiah 63 and verse 15. 
the Allman Bible version says that look down from heaven and see from your lofty home, your holy beautiful place. 63, Isaiah 63, 15, my dear. Isaiah 63, 15. It says, look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength? The sounding of your bowels and of thy mercies towards me. Are they restrained? The Oman Bible translation says, Look down from heaven and see from your lofty home, that holy and beautiful place. Where is your zeal and your might? Your yearning and your compassion are withheld from me. You are going to say tonight, Lord, let your yearning, let your zeal, let your compassion move towards me. Let your passion, your compassion let 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 it let it rest upon me let your yearning let let my situation let my life be a yearning for your spirit lord let there be a yearning in your spirit for me let there be let there be a, a desire let there be let there be an aspiration in your spirit for me begin to pray in the name of jesus look down from heaven and let your heart yearn for me let your heart yearn for my salvation let your heart yearn for my peace let your heart yearn for my joy let your heart yearn for my promotion let your heart let your heart yearn for my lifting up let your heart yearn for my healing my god my god tonight let your heart yearn towards me let there be a yearning in your spirit for my life oh god lord let your spirit let it yearn for me my god my god reveal direct your zeal towards me direct your zeal towards me tonight direct your gaze towards me direct your love towards me direct your compassion towards me direct your interest towards me lord tonight i pray that you direct your interest towards me mogada bayaba kabare kegetelia direct your power direct Direct your might, direct your ordinance, direct your governance, direct them towards me tonight. Let there be a yearning in your spirit for my life. Let there be a yearning in your spirit for my goodness. Let, your, let there be a yearning in your spirit, oh God, for my peace. In the mighty name of Jesus, praise the Lord. Let's say one more prayer to that same scripture. You say, Lord, send your spirit to refresh, update, redesign and renew the image of my life glory be to god what does that mean it means that when god looks at where you are when he looks at the picture that you present now he will send his spirit the bible says that in the beginning the earth was without form and void that was an image that was a picture so the moment you are reading that scripture immediately an image forms in your mind so there's an image, there's a perception about you, about your life, about your value, about your worth, about your relevance. There's a perception, there's an image about you. And so you're going to pray, Lord, as you are yearning for me, let your spirit refresh. Let your spirit redesign. Because the Bible says that the spirit of God over upon the surface of the deep. So you're going to pray, you're going to say, Lord, send your spirit to refresh, to update, to redesign. To renew the image of my life. Let it be that the man that saw me yesterday and turned away his face, let him see me today and run towards me. The man that will not listen to what I had to say yesterday, let him hear my voice and begin to run towards me. My God, my God, in that place of work where nobody will give any air to what I've got to say, let it be that before they can make a decision, they will begin to look for me. Begin to pray tonight. Lord, refresh the image of my life. Refresh the image of my life. Refresh the image of my ministry. Refresh the image of my calling refresh the image of my family refresh the image of my position refresh my image oh god in my family in my church in my place of work my god refresh my image refresh my image renew my image in the mighty name of jesus we bless your holy name in the mighty name of jesus the bible says that thou sendest forth that spirit that is Psalms 104 verse 30. You send forth your spirit and they are created. Hallelujah. And you renew the face of the earth. And that is why I'm very confident that God will renew the face, the image of your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Finally, let us pray. That God would direct the desire of nations by his power towards the gift and potentials of our life. 
Are you with me? That's our final prayer tonight. You're going to say, Lord, let your kingdom power, let it direct the aspiration of men, the resources of life, the desire of nations. Let it direct it to my gift. Let it direct it to my potential. Let it direct it to my abilities. Let it direct it to my learning. Let it direct it to my capabilities. You know, there is, there is an establishment that is looking for somebody that has the skill set that you have. There is an organization that is looking for somebody just like who you are. You begin to pray tonight. Lord, direct the heart of men. Direct the needs of men. Direct the aspiration of men. Direct the greatness of men. Direct it towards my gift. Direct it towards my potential. Direct it towards my ministry. Direct it towards my calling. Direct it towards my life. Direct it towards my capabilities. Direct them towards my learning. Direct them towards my skills and my competence. Begin to direct them, O God. Let your power direct them. Let your power direct Direct traffic towards my gift. Let your power direct traffic towards my calling. Let your power direct traffic towards my my enablement, towards my life, towards my opportunity, towards what belongs to me. Let your power begin to direct, oh God. Let it direct the aspiration of men. Let it direct the resources of life. Let it direct men towards me. In the mighty name of Jesus, begin to pray in the name of Jesus. Makila bagadaleya bagabarubi. For the heart of kings are in the hands of, and, and for the heart of kings are in the hands of the Lord. And like rivers of water, it turns it wherever he wills. The Lord will direct the hearts of men. He will direct the resources of life. He will direct the hope and the aspiration of nations. He will direct them towards you. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for you tonight. North, south, east and the west. From Asia to America. From Europe to Australia. I am declaring that God and the power of his kingdom will direct the resources of life towards your need towards your equipment towards your competence towards your learning towards your career towards your situation in the mighty name of jesus the god that took the children of israel in the wilderness and directed the quills to bring them meat the god almighty that directed the ravens to bring food to elijah by the brook of credon i declare by the message of the same living god i direct the resources of of life i direct the resources of life i direct the aspiration of nations i direct them to your talents i direct them to your business i direct them to your career i direct them to your competence i direct them to your situation in the mighty name of jesus i declare that the nations and the desire of the nations shall be directed towards you the thinking of men the thinking and the greatness of men will be directed towards you the resources of gentiles the forces of the nations shall be directed towards you it shall be converted to you the abundance of the seas it shall be converted unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare by the authority of heaven that the kingdom of God will invade the territories of your life where you have had pain, where you have had shame, where you have had distress. Where darkness has suffocated you, I command and I declare the kingdom of heaven to invade your territory, the power of heaven to invade those territories, the glory of heaven to invade those territories. In the name of Jesus, into your darkness, light will shine, into your mystery, joy will come, into your fallenness, the presence of God will come, into your loneliness, the grace of God will come, into your weakness, the power of God will come. In the name of Jesus, I invade your darkness. With the light of God. I invade your depression with the glory of God. I invade your inability with the power of God, with the ability of God, with the opportunity of God, with the grace of God, with the life of God, with the abundance of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I declare that you will reign in the midst of adversary. Everything that is accusing your life. Every accusation working against your life. Everything that has accused your health, that has accused your joy, that has accused your peace. Everything that has accused your opportunities to life and abundance and to enjoyment and to satisfaction and to fulfillment. Everything that has accused you to a life of abundance, of joy and peace in righteousness and in the power of the Holy Ghost. I declare that that head, that the head of that accuser is 
bruised in the name of Jesus. The head of that power is bruised in the name of Jesus. The head of that system is bruised in the name of Jesus. The head of that structure is built in the name is bruised in the name of Jesus. The head of the outcome of unrighteousness is bruised in the name of Jesus. Every four dimensional work of the enemy that has beset your life, I declare that they are bruised by the authority of heaven in the name of Jesus. I call the kingdom of God to come upon every power that has sought to be a lord over you. Every power that has sought supremacy over you. I bring the kingdom of God against them. I bring the judgment of God upon them. I bring the kingdom of heaven upon them in the mighty name of Jesus. I declare the authority of God over your life. I declare the authority of God over your situation. I declare the authority of God over your circumstance in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. Be magnified, O oh God. Be glorified, ancient of days. We worship and adore you. We honor you. We bless you. We sing your praise. We sing your glory. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, mighty one. Thank you, gracious Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. I want to thank God for the privilege of tonight. It is my confidence that the God Almighty has visited you with his kingdom and power in the name of Jesus. And you will testify of it. I will hear your testimony. I will hear your testimony. I will hear your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Tonight, let us uh, bring substances of worship before God. Let's worship God with our offering tonight. We generally take offerings in our services on a Wednesday and on a Sunday. We worship God with our substance. We worship God with our money. We take offerings. We are a church that believes in tithes and offering. And I want to encourage you wherever you are tonight to take an offering. Hallelujah. I know that it's a challenging time for all of us. But God is our honor and is our strength. He is the one that blesses us and he will continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. So let us worship him. It's always good to worship in services like this. Not just with our praise, not just with our worship, our songs and our uh, prayers and all those, those things that we do. But we can worship him with our substance as well. And so it is possible for you to give your offering tonight. If you are watching us on Facebook or YouTube, if you visit our website www.tremfulam.org.uk you will be able to give your offering on our donation tab hallelujah and if you are already on our wash um you're already on our website you are able to just click the donation button under your screen and you'll be able to give your offering in this way those of you that are also watching from our app if you click the menu button on the top left of your screen it will take you to the page where you are able to give your offering in this way and if you would like to pay directly into our bank account those are the details on the screen for you and those details will remain there while i pray Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your holy name. We give you praise for tonight. Thank you for all that you have done in righteousness. Thank you because you are good, you are great, you are kind, you are marvelous. We worship and adore you even as we bring our offerings before you. We ask, oh God, that you receive it in the name of Jesus. We ask that you bless it. We ask that you will sanctify it. And we pray, oh God, that it shall be pleasing unto you. We ask that the blessings of worship will come upon us and the grace from this spiritual investment will empower this ministry to reach nations and to bless lives to turn around communities and to emancipate those that have been incarcerated by the power of the enemy in the mighty name of jesus we thank you for your grace and for your glory we give you all honor be magnified forever and ever in jesus much less name we pray and all the saints shout a big amen shout amen shout amen shout a better amen hallelujah Glory be to God. Glory be to Jesus. It's such a pleasure to have fellowship with you tonight. And um, 
our prayer continues tomorrow evening we'll be praying tomorrow evening but we'll be praying only on zoom hallelujah we'll be praying only on zoom we will not be streaming our prayers tomorrow and friday we will not be streaming them we'll be meeting on zoom so please pay, um, bear that in mind if uh, you are not a member of our church and you want to be part of that meeting please send us um, an email at admin at tremflam.org.uk and we'll be able to provide details for you in order to be able to join that meeting but please bear in mind everybody else um, will be meeting zo solely on zoom tomorrow praise jesus we'll be meeting solely on zoom tomorrow um, and we'll be praying from 7 p.m and also on friday from 7 p.m please uh share that information with fam uh, with your family members wherever they are those of our children that are in school um even if you are going to work and things like that your church is always with you on your uh, mobile device so please avail yourself of this moment of prayer and the lord god will bless you real good in jesus name amen and amen hallelujah all right let us share the grace in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen and surely god's goodness and mercy shall abide with us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the lord now and forevermore amen the lord bless you real good and i look forward to see you again tomorrow and on Sunday as well for those of you who are um, friends of the family. The Lord bless you. Shalom.